Hello, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the impact of twisty bits on bendy bits. So what I mean by that is that when you've got a bit that just bends, say your knees, which are really just designed to go forwards and back, they are influenced by the twisty bits below them and above them, so feet and ankles, hips, pelvis, ribcage. Um, and so what we're going to work out is how your bendy bits are affected by your twisty bits. So we're going to start off by testing your bendy bits. So the two main bendy bits that I'm thinking about today are your knees and your lower back, which are not really designed to twist, they are designed to bend. So let's have a look, really easy ways to test that out. How does your squat feel? So if you come down into a squat position, does that feel easy? Does it feel comfortable? Is there anything that pinches or feels like it's sore, it's getting overstretched, is there anything that feels like it's offline, anything that doesn't feel quite right, anything that makes it not feel easy. So we start with a, um, a, a squat and then we're going to go for a toe touch, so because this is going to test the bendy bits in your low back, so just drop your chin forward, drop your shoulders, roll the way down, bringing your weight onto your heels and your hat, as your fingertips swing above the floor or hands flat on the floor if you're able to, and then come back up again. How did that feel? Did that again feel uncomfortable, tight? Where did you feel the tightness? And then what we're going to do is play around with some ideas for how we release that tightness and, and see what out of your twisty bits are going to be affecting your knees and your lower back. So that's the premise for today's video. So the comfortable movement that the foot should be able to make is fanning and folding. So as I step forward, my weight onto the right foot, you can see that my arch is fanning, so that's getting it's flattening. And then as I come back, it's folding back up again. So fan and fold, fan and fold. And if you look at it from the front, you'll watch my toes here, you'll see I fan out, so my toes get a little wider and they get a little longer, and then everything shortens as I come back fans out, folds up, fans out, folds up. So have a go at that. Is your foot doing that? If your foot is not doing that, then I've got a couple of tricks to help it improve. Now one of those, or the first one, is to open up the subtalar joint on the inside of the foot. So the subtalar joint, we have the, the calcaneus is the heel bone, and then we have the, the talus. So the, the joint underneath the talus is called the subtalar joint. And what we're going to do is just try and hold onto that with your outer hand and then with your inner hand you're just going to run your thumb or the heel of your hand and try and pull that heel bone away from the rest of the foot. So sort of going along the line of the shin you're just going to try and pull that bone away. Now for me I don't have any issues with my subtalar joint so for me that's quite comfortable, quite relaxed. But if you have got a stiff and tight subtalar joint, that might be quite sore. So just do that until your subtalar joint calms down and feels more comfortable and, and more flexible. Then I'm going to get you to come off the, off the seat, but I'm going to use it there for, for balance. So I'm going to come into the, um, the fibula bone. Now the fibula, you've got the tibia that goes down the main shin bone, and then you've got the fibula on the outside here. And the fibula is much more about shock absorption, whereas the, the tibia is more about loading. So um, there should be a little bit of movement in, in the fibula on the tibia. So what you can do first of all is just find that on the outside of your knee, just below the, the main bulk of the knee, you'll find the, the head of fibula with a little knobble just sort of there-ish. And if you reach that with the heel of your hand, you should be able to just nudge into the head of fibula there. So we're just pushing that, nudging it, and you'll feel gradually that it just opens up and gets a bit more flexible, a bit more comfortable. And then if you do this, the same but opposite um, at the bottom end, what tends to happen when you're, um, when the bottom of the fibula gets, gets stuck is that it tends to get stuck, pushed forward. So what we do, so what we do with this one is if you hold onto it with your fingers and then bend your knee forward, so you're sort of pulling the uh, fibula backwards as you bring the knee forward. And so that's quite a nice way to open out your uh, 
tenochromal joint, which is which is the, the sort of top of the ankle from across the front of the ankle there. And so you've then mobilised the subtalar joint, medial subtalar joint, and you've mobilised the, the fibula in both directions. So then we can retest that fan and fold and see how that feels. So coming into there, is it any easier to get that fan and that fold, fan and fold? And so that's the first stage of what we're going to do. That's the, the release and mobilise stage of loosening your foot. And next we're going to look at the proprioception. So in terms of proprioception for the feet, we're going to start looking at what your toes are doing because they're pretty important. Um, so I'm going to start off by just getting you to wake up the, the toe spreading muscles so that we've got all the adductors of the toes, adductor hallucis, as you can see, I'm spreading my toes. And this is just a way to wake up the toe muscles and get everything working. There is never going to be loads of movement here, but get as much as you can, get those toes to spread as far as you can. So that's one exercise that you can do to improve proprioception around the, around the toes. And then the other one I really like is just thinking about your big toes. And I've got other videos that you can watch to improve the effect, the, the um, activation of the big toes if you want to, the flexor hallucis longus. But what we're going to do is really focus on pushing down through the big toe as you just take your weight gently forward onto your toes. So we're not going up into a full calf raise, we're just taking the weight through the big toes and just shuffling forward. So if I come slightly sideways, you can see how much I'm really not coming up high on the heels at all. But what I'm really focused on is spreading my toes and getting my big toes really engaged with the ground and this is what should happen as you step forwards and as you push off the toes. So that's how we get more proprioception and we wake up the toe muscle. Okay so we've just looked at the twisty bit of the feet so now let's see what effect that's had on our bendy bits, our knees and low back. Okay, so having just woken up the feet, we're going to try that squat again and see how that feels. Does that feel any easier, any more comfortable? Do you feel any lighter or more balanced than when you did it before? And then the same thing for the toe touch, just feel what, how your low back feels as you do this. So drop your head, drop your shoulders, roll your hands down your thighs, keeping your head down and bring your fingertips to the floor. Are you any closer to the floor with your fingertips? than you were before you opened up your feet. Bend your knees, roll back up, and that is the retest. So that if, if your feet changed how your bendy bits work, then your feet is an area that you should consider treating and looking at. 